Well, here I am in Ashland, Oregon, at the tail end of a week-long ski and Lord of the Rings marathon road trip. <laughs> and staying with my buddy, Dr. Nick from Essential Earth Ministries, formerly Essential Oil Wizardry. And I uh, had an interesting experience of sleep last night. I woke up at 4 a.m., as happens pretty regularly, as in the daily for someone who suffers occasionally from insomnia. And I was in a panic attack and uh, had a bad dream. And I was fully awake, fully in the, the panic. And uh, I used a technique that I've been exploring for about a month now. EFT tapping, which I have posted on before, but I've really gotten into in the last month. And uh, I tapped, you know, with their uh, with the fear meditation for about eight minutes uh, on the fear, and really sat with it, not trying to get rid of it, but just really trying to understand the fear. And sure enough, it dissipated, and I went back to sleep, amazingly. And I had been up and like really awake for about an hour and I slept from five till eight till my alarm which is pretty remarkable for that depth of sleep to happen for me um, and the tapping I, I believe enabled this by letting that emotion uh, come up and then go down so what I've learned from this YouTube video that I found a couple weeks ago which I will post in the comments is that anxiety and fear um, you know, all of these things are emotions and they are all valid. And this is super essential for me because, you know, so much of my life is like trying to get rid of my anxiety, trying to laugh through it or trying to, you know, move beyond it or heal it. But what this guy has kind of enlightened for me is that it's actually not that healthy to try to get rid of our emotions. Not healthy at all. So the idea is that you know, you learn to love them and thank the emotions. Like when my anxiety comes up, oh, you're really scared right now. Wow, yeah, I can see that you really don't want me to die in this situation. I really appreciate that. And when the parts are heard for their intention, they tend to chill out. And a good analogy that I was imagining for this, talking to a friend this morning was like, imagine you've got like a three-year-old boy you're walking with, he's your son, and he's like, daddy, I don't wanna go in that grocery store. I'm scared of the grocery store. And in your head, you're like, you're crazy. It's a grocery store. And, <laughs> but, but do you tell the son that? Do you like get angry at your son? You need to go in the grocery store and slap your son and <laughs> get all aggro with him? No. You get down on your knee and you're like, oh, I'm sorry you're feeling scared. What's scary about the grocery store? And you listen to him, right? Like that's the compassionate, loving thing to do. Why don't we do that with ourselves? These parts of us are likely three-year-old little children or some age like that sitting inside of us still reacting the same way they thought was best when we were three years old. And so why, why are we trying to, you know, hold them to a 40-year-old's consciousness state they never knew these things they haven't grown up this entire time it's still a three-year-old so that level of compassion is what I'm trying to bring to my anxiety now and uh, that's kind of it's pretty exciting you know to think that I can just be grateful for whatever that anxiety is trying to bring to my life and that might actually soften the entire experience like the sun coming out on a cloudy day. <laughs> Just like that. Thanks for listening.